US-Mexico border that we were talking about with Will Grant. I'm joined now by Will Hurd, former Republican congressman from Texas who does did represent that border region. But first of all, Mr. Hurd, thanks for joining us. When you see those scenes in Brazil, does it look so eerily reminiscent to you of what happened here in Washington on January the 6th, 2021? Once again, supporters of a president claiming an election falsely has been stolen. Uh, political violence anywhere is disappointing and, and something that shouldn't be tolerated. And those that perpetuate this kind of political violence uh, should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. And those elected leaders who these individuals are following uh, should also be looked into and prosecuted uh, for potentially you know, causing and fomenting uh, this type of violence um, and, 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 and crying that about stolen elections as a way to stay in power is not democratic, it's not conservative. And it's not something that political leaders should be doing. But what about the link between former President Trump and former President Jair Bolsonaro? Mr. Trump called him the Trump of the tropics, didn't he? He, he did. And, and look, I think we've seen this kind of, of rhetoric in, in many places around the world. Um, I, I would say it's it's something that kind of these authoritarian wings of, of, of political parties are trying to espouse. But just uh, like we saw in Washington, D.C., we saw happen in Brazil um, that the business of the people continued. And this is something I'm sure uh, just like our government, the Brazilian government is going to look into this and, and prosecute people uh, to the full extent of the law as, as possible. If we turn to the situation here in Washington, D.C., where, as you saw, it took 15 votes last week for Kevin McCarthy to become Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, what do you think that says about the Republican Party in Congress as someone who was a Republican lawmaker? Uh, well, I'm still a Republican. I'm, I'm not a lawmaker anymore. Uh, the, the difficulty in, in having a, a narrow margin, the lessons that we should have learned from our midterm elections this past November is that the American people want folks that are going to solve problems. They want common sense leaders to tackle things like our national debt, to tackle things like um, inflation, something that's impacting you know everybody around the world, to tackle issues uh, like border security, what we're seeing a crisis on the southern border, a border uh, that I, I used to represent. And, and the public is not looking to see people go back and forth and the process, uh, solve problems, don't just complain about them and don't fight amongst yourselves. And so I wish Kevin McCarthy the best. Uh, he did something that a lot of folks thought he wasn't going to be able to pull off, but he did. And I hope what we saw last week is the high water mark of, of the drama, um, not the low water mark, because there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Do you think there's any chance that this Congress could pass comprehensive immigration reform and do something about the situation at the border you used to represent? Well, th there is there's a narrow area when it comes to work visas that I think there would be uh, some, some ability to have some compromise that that Republicans would be willing to work on. This is actually one of those areas uh, that Democrats have never shown really interest in, in focusing on. You know, there's a lot of folks that want to come to the United States and, and work. Uh, we have benefited from the brain game uh, of every other country for the last couple of decades. I want to be able to see that. And that's an, a narrow area. However, that's going to require the, the president to recognize and understand the crisis that's happening along the border. And some of the images that we saw from his recent visit to a place like El Paso, a, a community I used to represent, is not reflective of the real crisis that's going on. These are communities that do not have the ability to continue to do this kind of uh, bear the brunt uh, of the of these of, of, of this issue that the federal government has, has fallen down on. Um, it's not humane to have people uh, living on the street um, of places like El Paso, especially uh, when it's cold. And, and this administration um, has made a problem that started right. on the previous administration even worse. Will Hurd, thank you so much for joining us.